Minari. Uh, available on uh, video on demand. And if you can find it in a theater, it might be available in a theater as well. Zach, I'm going to go to you first. Tell us all about Minari and what you thought. Okay, so Minari tells the semi-autobiographical um, story um, of a Korean family, a Korean immigrant family in the United States in the early 1980s. And um, they have resettled, not just from Korea, but originally they were in California. Now they've moved to Northwest Arkansas, which is sort of like um, a hub in the Ozarks uh, for um, chicken farming and then also agricultural farming. Interestingly enough, I'm going to Northwest Arkansas next week, which is why I can't be on the podcast next week. So I'll report back to you if the movie's accurate <laughs> in its um, geographical depiction. Um, but anyway, Talk about timing. Yeah, no kidding. Um, the movie stars uh, Stephen Yoon, who's getting a lot of Oscar buzz as Jacob, the patriarch of the family. He's the one who kind of instigates the move to Arkansas, and he has this dream of becoming. Um, opening a great farm, um, particularly uh, harvesting Korean plants and trying to sell it uh, as a, uh, to Korean horse, ho uh, wholesalers in like uh, Little Rock and Oklahoma City and these other kind of metropolitan areas in the Southwest. Um, his wife is, is uh, her name is uh, Monica. She's played by um, Yuri Han and she's a lot more skeptical. She thinks that they've actually been able to make it in California. They, they do this work where they, I've never seen this depicted in the movie. I didn't even know this was a real thing where they look at the bottom of chicks and they have to determine whether they're male or female. And the females go to the next level to get, you know, nested for their eggs and the males get, uh, let's just say they, they get on the chopping block. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the life that she's at least somewhat satisfied with because uh, it, it provides enough money for them to be able to um, pay, uh, you know, afford a house and care for their children, their two children, uh, uh, Jacob and, or excuse me, um, David and, Mon uh, and uh, Anne. Um, but uh, the Stephen Yoon character has a lot more ambitious aspirations, and so he wants to open up this farm. Um, quickly, you know, they discover that the farm, the farm life is very hard. Um, it's hard to get uh, good um, water. Um, the the father character is, is joined in the movie by Will Patton, uh, who plays Paul, a kind of redneck neighbor who's also extremely evangelical. Religion actually plays an interesting role in this movie. Um, the family does go to this kind of local Baptist church in, in an attempt to try to be friendly with the people around there. They certainly suffer some some racism, but it's more like kind of latent microaggression type racism. Um, and later in the movie, they invite uh, uh, Monica's mother, um, played in the movie by Yoo Jung Yoon, um, to live with them. Um, this is a movie that uh, has a very leisurely pace. It's not a movie that has huge, um, you know, uh, story arcs or um, points in the story where there's major um, surprises. It's much more kind of um, daily life. Uh, a lot of the movies seen through the perspective of David, the youngest son, and particularly his relationship with his gram grandma. Um, but there's also at sort of at the center of this movie is is the marriage between um, Jacob and Monica, which is uh, strained by uh, you know financial difficulties, difficulties adjusting to this new environment. Their house is literally on this uh, wheel on these wheels um, in the middle of this field, really in the middle of nowhere. And um, you know the relationship with the locals in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, the movie's really. Um, beautiful to look at. It's, it's well shot. Um, it tells, I think, a very, a very specific story of assimilation in, in the United States. It's interesting this movie's getting some, not backlash, but there's backlash to the fact that it's being considered a, a non-English language movie before it is being considered an American movie, which has complicated its categorization in award season. Um, I like the movie. I, I do wish that I, I guess my two criticisms are: I wish that it had focused a little bit more on this on the strained marriage and less so on the young boy and his grandma. I think those scenes we kind of get the feel of them. We've seen them in movies before. They're good performances, but really, the heart of this movie is this really complex relationship. Um, these two characters, the husband and wife, don't always say out loud exactly what they're saying or what they're feeling. So a lot of it is sort of um, in the body language and in their tonality, which um, I think creates two really complex and, and nice performances. Um, and then I guess my other criticism is I think the pacing's a little slow at times. It does 
get going in the final like 30, 35 minutes of this movie, there are big things that start happening. And it kind of made me wonder like, had the movie had maybe been a little bit shorter or more um, condensed in showing those kind of bigger events, I think it would have made for a more fulfilling experience. But as it is, it's a solid three and a half star movie, very enjoyable movie, a quiet movie that I think will appeal to um, both art house audiences and audiences who are looking for um, good good entertainment about the struggles of real people in um, you know very specific uh, situations in terms of culture, in terms of identity and demographics. And uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I hope this movie does well at the Oscars. I think it deserves several nominations. All right, all right. So three and a half from Zach. Todd, how about you go next? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I. I, I was struck immediately by it said it was a plan B and a 24 production. And that just kind of tells you everything you need to know. Like this is a small movie, but that was two of the most creative and powerful studios in the world for prestige product projects. And it really gives a platform for a really good movie like this. Uh, I think the movie early on kind of looks like the tree of life. Like it's almost got these like poetic shots of the landscape and like I, the score going on by Emil Mosseri is I, I think as good of a score as I heard from any 2020 movie. And um, I, I do like that it's told from the point of view of David a lot of the time because he, he's like looking up to his father as being like this unapproachable guy doing the most important thing to him, which is make a living. And it, that really says something about the dynamics of and uh, about how, how he views himself as a, as, a, as a person and needing to provide for his family like that. I think the performances are all great. Yeah, like Steven Yoon should be nominated. Uh, Yu, Yu Jun Yoon is uh, definitely the scene stealer is the grandma. The kids are great, but Yeri Han, I feel like is the standout in the movie. She is so subtle and she just like breaks your heart uh, at, at times. There's one particular um, scene near the end where uh, they sort of have a, 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 a fight and she just is heartbreaking to watch. I, I, I like that it's methodical, but it's not slow. It's like, it's like touching and heartfelt, but it's not corny. It's, it's like pleasant to watch, but it does have like tough lessons and confrontations. It's not melodramatic, but it's still it's still kind of sad. And I actually think it is really funny. Like David and Soon Ja are like the most adorable uh, grandparent grandchild relationship that I've seen since like Little Miss Sunshine. It it's uh it's it looks beautiful. The vibrant colors, really rich dialogue. I don't I like that it doesn't reinvent the wheel or try to, but it still isn't obvious to watch. It isn't flashy. It's not political. It just feels real and it's kind of hopeful. I think it's the most American movie of 2020 and uh, i would have no problem if this was the best picture winner i'm giving it three and a half stars as well it comes in at number 14 of the year for me right now but i mean it could move up in time all right so three and a half from zach three and a half from todd three and a half from me uh i'm right there with with you guys todd i'm i i like that you mentioned uh little miss sunshine because i was thinking the grandma character is like a combination of zhao shu zhen from the farewell and Alan Arkin from Little Miss Sunshine. Like if you smash those two together, you get this grandma. Um, yeah. In that, and in, in that she's she's uh, she's cut like new to the country, but also she has and new to the culture that's being presented. But at the same time, she's very brash and opinionated. And uh, there, there's a whole lot of Alan Arkin, Abigail Breslin in the in the relationship yeah. between the two of them. Uh, but yeah, going along with a lot, of, a lot of what you guys said, um, it, I, I found it fascinating how um, it didn't fall for the trope of being uh, overly like racist or stereotypical. Um, it just kind of felt real. Like Zach, you said there, there's a lot of little micro micro racism in there, which it is, I mean, is, is bound to happen, especially in that setting. But there's no uh, it. You're, you're waiting for that moment of okay where when's the hate crime gonna happen and that that's not what it's about and it's not a struggle uh between people it's a struggle uh between like this family and the american dream and and that and no person gets in their way it's just the the life of these people and i found that fascinating at the same time, it kind of made it a little slow because it was hard to find the conflict in it as easily as it is in other movies. Um, and so that that's like one of the few things holding it back from being a true masterpiece. Uh, it, but it, it's 
it it was such a great movie and a uh, fascinating movie to watch and and yeah it is a very american movie and i i think a lot of the people who are having issues with the award stuff are just really just looking for ways to have issues with stuff and the golden globes foreign category ha- does have some issues but it is a foreign language category and that's why this is primarily in a foreign language the problem with the golden globes is more that if you not are nominated in foreign language film you can't be nominated for best picture that's the real issue um it's not the fact i mean according to their standards this is a movie that's not in english therefore it qualifies for that category so i i don't have an issue as much with that as i do with you can't i mean it's parasite would have won best picture at the golden globes last year but it couldn't because it won foreign language film that's more well, the well, issue, one thing i saw was that it has about the same amount of english in the movie as inglorious bastards did and that was still considered for Best Picture drama. That's a valid point. That's a valid point. So something I'll take up with you, Todd, because I feel like we need to disagree about something, right? Um, I didn't like the I didn't like the music in this movie. I thought it was weird. It 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 kind of made the movie feel like out of place and almost like overly sentimental at times. And it sounded like I read this in I think it was uh, the RogerEbert.com review. It said that it sounded like it was played on an out of tune piano, which I would agree. So. Um, I, but, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I do agree, though, with the Terrence Malick analogy. I mean, you could take, like, definitely some screen stills of this movie, like, particularly with Steven Yeun, like, looking at the dirt. There's definitely also a little bit of, like, Jean de Florette in this movie. I thought that this movie is like a mixture. If we're going to mash two movies together, it would be Jean de Florette meets In America, which is maybe the strangest mixture you, with, with a Korean cast, uh, which is a really Directed strange... by Terrence Malick. Exactly, Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know, though. I mean, to, to me, yeah, I, I think a lot of critics are picking up on on the relationship between Graham, the, the, the grandma character and, and the grandson. But to me, it's like, I don't know. I've kind of like we saw that in Little Miss Sunshine. We saw that in The Farewell to a certain extent. We've seen that before. I thought that I, I wish this movie had almost like not shown the kids at all. I think that that like there's a lot of intro, introspective sort of um, complex negotiation between these two adult characters. Obviously, that's not what the movie was was trying to do. But like, uh, I absolutely agree, though, with with your analysis that Steven Yeun and Yuri Han are phenomenal in this movie. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the the thing with the telling it from the point of view of the kid was also something that reminded me of the Tree of Life, because like a lot of that movie, it's not about Brad Pitt. It's about the kid and his father. And I, I think that uh, I think the dynamic there works as well. But yeah, I mean, I, I was I, I guess I was more interested in the parents as well. I, yeah. I didn't I didn't mind the the dynamic of of seeing it from the kids kids point of view and I, I don't know it brings it brings uh, a little more of the the innocence of it to it I think of of focusing on on them which I feel like this is kind of what it was what it was going for too is is this feels like a very innocent story of the struggle to to achieve the American dream. So why does why does Will Patton like help Stephen Yoon? I I guess maybe I missed that part. Like he he's a Korean War vet, and so feels that connection to him. I, that that's the only thing. Right, I but he's saw. not getting he's not getting paid though, right? No, no. I think I think that's it's just he's the odd eccentric you know war vet that's struggling with stuff and finds a purpose in 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 that family. Uh, yeah, I, I found his character fascinating because because of some of what you said and it's one of the first times i've seen will Patton not play will Patton in a yeah, movie is it his yeah. best movie <laughs> it yeah. might, it might yeah. i think it might be his best performance i was thinking that earlier i was like this, this has got to be his best movie right i mean <laughs> he's he's brilliant in this and he brings something different that i've never seen from him and uh and again it it, it it's just a it's such a good movie like, like everyone in this movie, you can tell every single character has the best intentions and, and you don't see that in a movie very often. And, and it's great to see that, that everyone has the best intentions and it's just a struggle of people trying to live their lives and not have to worry about who's attacking their life. Well, that's the best and worst thing about the movie too, because in, in the way that it, I think some, some folks might find this movie to be very leisurely paced. And there's not a lot of, you know, dramatic, uh, you know, drug addiction or affairs or, you know, murders. I mean, this is a movie that is very much grounded in the reality of what uh, Lee Isaac Chung's family must have gone through to some extent. So, 
Um, I don't know. I, I like, yeah, it's meditative and, and reflective and interesting. But I, like I said in my review, when 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 the dramatic points and beats do start in this story, it's like more interesting. But you know, I'm an ugly American audience, so. So Todd, you said it was 14th on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 14th. it 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 just cracks my top 20. So so that's where it's out on my list. So so I sounds like I liked it the most. Potentially, potentially. I think Zach's trying to nitpick so we can we can have some sort of disagreement because never are we like this much in agreement on a on a movie and saying, yeah, it was it was great. It was great. I and, have it as my number three of 2021. There we go. Now we'll start an argument. <laughs> Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay.